So just after the projection of points chapter, now we are going to discuss about projections of straight lines. So how to project a straight line uh, in order to obtain its front view and top view and how we are going to draw it in the paper uh, with respect to the XY line. This is nothing but the work nature in the projection of a straight lines chapter. Uh, as usual, we are going to follow the orthographic projection concept here, but not like the projection of points chapter. Here, we are going to work only with the first quadrant. We are not going to work with the second, third and fourth quadrant. That is, the line which we are going to draw is only going to be placed in the first quadrant. We are not going to place it in the second quadrant. Very sorry. In the second quadrant. So, this is what the uh, task here. Before uh, getting to discuss the questions, first of all, we have to be aware about what are all the various cases in a projection of straight lines chapter. So, starting from the scratch, we are going to study. So, what are all the various cases? First, we have to know what are they. Thereafter, case by case, we can start to discuss how to draw the projections of straight lines. In that way, the first case here is uh, cases are nothing but what are all the possible conditions of a straight line to be placed with respect to the horizontal plane and a vertical plane in our space. Okay, so the first possibility is straight line parallel to HP and VP, parallel to HP and VP, and the second case straight line perpendicular to one principal plane and parallel to another. So, in that we may have two possible cases, they are straight line perpendicular to HP and parallel to VP. Again, straight line perpendicular to VP and parallel to HP. And the third category is straight line inclined to one plane and parallel to another plane. In that also, like the previous case, we can have two choices. That is straight line inclined to HP and parallel to VP. Same way, straight line inclined to VP and parallel to HP. And the final case is straight line inclined to both HP and B. So these are all the four possible cases for a straight line to be placed with respect to the horizontal plane and vertical plane. Uh, not, uh, don't uh, make it uh, complicated. Just like you are points, instead of the point, we are going to work with a straight line. So, in the previous chapter, we placed a point in the space which is uh, obtained by the horizontal plane and vertical plane. We imagine we have two principal planes and the environment. So, we assumed a point placed with respect to the horizontal plane and the vertical plane. Maybe the point above the horizontal plane and in front of the vertical plane and then we obtained the front view and the top view. This top view and the front view are nothing but we need to draw with respect to the x-y line. This is what the work uh, nature in the previous chapter and now instead of a point we are going to work with a straight line. So a straight line is going to be placed with respect to the horizontal plane and the vertical plane. See like that. So it's your HP, that's your VP and a straight line is going to be assumed like that. And as I told earlier, 
we are not going to work with the second third and the fourth quadrants here we are going to only uh, work with the first quadrant so the above hp in front of vp space only we are going to consider in order to place a straight line so in that way we can place a straight line and we are going to obtain its front view and the top view okay based on the case we can uh, have various choices of the rushing condition of the straight line and based on the particular uh, uh, case the front and top view shape may be changed okay before get into the question uh, question so we can have a short look on uh, how we are going to place the straight lines with respect to these cases okay it's a simple example for a straight line okay it's just a pvc pipe consider your uh, floor is your hp and the wall is the vp so here i am having this is my hp and that's my vp so with respect to that vp and hp i am going to uh, place this straight line for the demonstration purpose the first case is straight line parallel to hp and vp so the straight line is now parallel to both hp and vp so how to make this straight line parallel to both vp and hp so when you can say a straight line is parallel to a plane if it is a play a straight line when you can say this straight line is parallel to a particular plane for example the horizontal plane so horizontal plane is the flat plane the horizontal plane so when you can say this straight line is parallel to that plane whenever you extend this straight line in its lengthwise direction this won't cross the particular plane then we can say that particular straight line is parallel to those particular uh, plane okay so this is nothing but the condition for a line and a plane to be parallel to each other in that way the first case straight line this straight line parallel to hp and vp see this straight line i am making it to stand like that here i am having my hp there i am having my vp now i can say this straight line is parallel to hp and parallel to vp if i extend this straight line in its lengthwise direction this won't cut the horizontal plane as well as the vertical plane so you can say this straight line is parallel to the horizontal plane and parallel to the vertical plane okay and the second case is straight line perpendicular to one plane and parallel to another plane straight line perpendicular to one plane and parallel to another plane in that itself we can have two two choices straight line perpendicular to hp and parallel to vp how to make this straight line perpendicular to hp and parallel to vp now it is parallel to both hp and vp but what i needed to do is i am going to make it perpendicular to hp and parallel to vp now it is perpendicular to hp the angle of inclination between this straight line and the horizontal plane is 90 degree so you can say this straight line is perpendicular to the horizontal plane the mean time the same straight line is parallel to the vertical plane parallel to the vertical plane this is nothing but this choice and the next one is straight line perpendicular to vp and parallel to hp how to make this you need to make this straight line perpendicular to the vp right and the mean time parallel to hp see here it is parallel to hp so if you made like made like that now this straight line become perpendicular to the vp and parallel to the hp so these two cases are coming under the same category that is a straight line perpendicular to one plane parallel to another plane it may be perpendicular to hp and parallel to vp or perpendicular to vp and parallel to hp these two are, say, are coming under same category two and the third case straight line inclined to one plane and parallel to another plane so before get into that see perpendicularity is also an inclination but its value is 90 degree we specially qualified that 90 degree inclination as perpendicular that's why we are discussing these two cases separately actually perpendicular is also a kind of inclination whenever it is parallel then one we can say there is no inclination if you are having one degree or 
179 degree it is nothing but the inclination 90 degree is also inclination but we categorize, uh, categorize the 90 degree inclination specially as perpendicular and studied it in a separate case and the third case is straight line uh, inclined to one plane and parallel to another plane it is having two subdivisions straight line inclined to hp and parallel to vp see here this straight line is now going to inclined to hp inclined to hp the inclination is not 0 degree not 90 degree 0 to 90 any value is nothing but the straight line inclined to hp and parallel to vp okay it is actually parallel to vp but inclined to hp some angle of inclination you can measure between this straight line and the horizontal plane so you can say this straight line is now inclined to hp and parallel to vp and then the same category we can have one more choice straight line inclined to vp and parallel to hp see here this straight line is now inclined to vp i think in this view it is not possible for you to recognize it clearly but just assume uh, now it is parallel to vp and parallel to hp without affecting the parallel to hp condition i am making it inclined to vp inclined to vp there is an angle of inclination is formed between this straight line and the vertical plane this that's why we are calling it as inclined to vp and the meantime it is still parallel to hp only still parallel to hp only so it is nothing but the second choice straight line inclined to vp and parallel to hp uh, these two are coming under the same category that is a straight line inclined to one plane and a parallel to another plane it may be inclined to hp and a parallel to vp or inclined to vp and a parallel to hp whatever it may be both are coming under the same category and the last one is straight line inclined to both horizontal plane and vertical plane straight line inclined to both horizontal plane and vertical plane see here now it is parallel to both planes parallel to vp parallel to hp now i want to make, make it as pet uh, sorry inclined to both hp and vp say now it is inclined to hp and parallel to vp now it is inclined to hp and inclined to vp also this is nothing but a double inclination straight line inclined to both horizontal plane and vertical plane okay so let me to give some uh, graphical representation of these all cases uh, let me to rub off the board first The first case, the straight line is parallel to both HP and VP, just like that. Parallel to both HP and VP. The second case, straight line perpendicular to HP, parallel to VP straight line perpendicular to hp and parallel to vp the meantime we may have perpendicular to vp and parallel to hp also it is a straight line it is an another straight line this straight line is perpendicular to hp and parallel to vp but that straight line that straight line is perpendicular to vp and parallel to hp the second case straight line inclined to uh, sorry perpendicular to one plane and parallel to another plane this is nothing but the first case straight line parallel to both hp and vp uh, let me to mention the hp and vp even you know it and the third case yeah. see the straight line 
inclined to one plane and parallel to another plane. Now this straight line is inclined to HP and parallel to VP. The same way you can have one more line uh, which is a straight line inclined to VP and parallel to HP. So here it is having some inclination with HP theta but with the VP there is no inclination. But that straight line is having some inclination with VP and parallel to HP. So this is the third case straight line inclined to one plane and parallel to another plane. And the final case is straight line inclined to both horizontal plane and vertical plane. So this straight line is having inclination with the VP as well as inclination with the HP. So this is nothing but the double inclination straight line having inclination with both HP and VP. So now uh, somewhat I may have some idea about the uh, relations of a straight line with respect to the horizontal plane and vertical plane uh, in view of the various cases and why we are studying these things and how far it is helpful for us to draw the projections of the straight line is whenever you are considering a line with respect to horizontal plane and vertical plane particularly in the first quadrant the position of the line should come under any one of this category only not beyond that a straight line if you place it in the horizontal plane and vertical plane environment particularly in the first quadrant its position definitely uh, will come under any one of these four cases so based on that only we are going to draw the front and the top view of the particular straight line and uh, how the length of the straight line is going to vary based on its position with respect to HP and VP these things we are going to study in every problems and our first duty is to have some demonstrative problems in first second and third cases and the main concentration of this chapter is only on the fourth case straight line inclined to both HP and VP this is nothing but the uh, questions uh, asked from the chapter for the examination but we should learn the first second and the third cases then only it is possible to learn the fourth case okay so for some uh, with some demonstrative type simple problems we may read the first second and third categories then we can go for the fourth category okay now with the first case uh, let me to give you a simple problem the question is a straight line AB. See, for mentioning the name of a point in the previous chapter, we used only one alphabet because point is a single point. So only one alphabet is required to mention its name. But straight line is having two terminals, a starting point and an end point. So in order to give the name for the straight line, we needed to use two alphabets. A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever it may be. We need to use two alphabets in order to mention the name of a straight line. Okay. In order to mention its starting point and end point. And the distance between the starting point and end point is nothing but the length of the straight line. Okay. So straight line A, B, 60 mm long. 60 mm long is 20 mm above HP and 10 mm in front of VP. The line is parallel to both HP and VP. Draw its projections. This is nothing but the question. In this question, we are having a straight line which is 60 mm long. Its one end name is A, another end name is B. This straight line is placed in the first quadrant uh, because it is above HP and in front of VP. How much above HP? 20 mm above HP and 10 mm in front of VP. And the meantime, this straight line is parallel to both horizontal plane and vertical plane. 
parallel to both horizontal plane and vertical plane you need to draw its front and top views this is nothing but the first thing so if you consider it in the 3d environment with respect to the horizontal plane and vertical plane first this straight line is purely parallel to both horizontal plane and vertical plane this end is a and that end is b now you need to draw its front and top views front view is nothing but the shadow simply say the shadow of the straight line falls on the vertical plane this is vertical plane and that is horizontal plane so this shadow is nothing but the front view of the line front view of the line and the top view is nothing but when you look from the top the shadow of the line falls on the horizontal plane so this is nothing but the top view and this front view can be mentioned with the name a dash small letter a dash and the small letter b dash and the meantime the top view can be mentioned with the small letter a and small letter b so this is top view and that is front view this capital letter a b is nothing but the actual line our aim is to draw this a dash b dash and a b with respect to the x y line with respect to the x y line and the, as per the problem statement, the straight line is placed 10 mm in front of VP and 20 mm above HP. 20 mm above HP, 10 mm in front of VP. Uh, in that way, the straight line is floating in the space with respect to the horizontal plane and vertical plane. And we are going to draw its A dash B dash front view, A B top view with respect to the X Y line. Okay. Let me draw, draw it. First of all, you have to draw the XY line. Now, only XY line we are having. Uh, first, we can start from the front view drawing. This A dash, B dash, we need to draw how to draw this a dash b dash before that uh, few logical things i needed to discuss with you what about the length of this a dash b dash the a b length is 60 mm okay it's given in the question the a b length is 60 mm what about the length of this a dash b dash any idea What I am asking is, I am having a line like this. Okay, I am having a line. I am passing a light from its front to make its shadow falls on this wall. Okay, this line is purely parallel to the wall. So, what will be the length of the shadow of this line? Equal to its length or greater than its length or lesser than its length? Equal. Equal, right. Equal to the line. Yes? equal to the line okay now i am making this straight line perpendicular to the vertical plane okay perpendicular to the wall now again i am passing a light in front i will get a shadow of the line here what will be the length of the shadow just a point very good there is no more length here you can measure you will get just a point as a shadow of this straight line why the length is reduced? Because this is nothing but the actual fact. If the straight line is purely perpendicular to the plane, here, the vertical plane, the length of the shadow having no length. See how it will become zero. If it is parallel, you can get the maximum and original length shadow in the screen. If you start to giving inclination, starting from 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree, See here, now I am having nearly 40 degree of inclination of this straight line with the plane. If I pass the light in front, I will get a shadow here. Is this shadow is having its original 60 mm length or decreased length? Decreased. Very good. The length will be decreased because there is no parallelism maintained between this straight line and the screen where you want to get the shadow. I just made it inclined. So, uh, degree by degree if I increase the inclination the length of the shadow will start to reduce at the maximum of 90 degree the shadow length will become zero this is the actual logic here okay 
based on that logic the front and top views may change now come to the current question in this question this line the 60 mm length line is parallel to both horizontal plane and vertical plane so in this condition if you suppose to get the front view a dash b dash what will be the length of the front view the same 60 mm the original length you will get because the line is parallel to vp so what about the length of the top view will it is equal to 60 mm or lesser than 60 mm 60 mm same 60 mm because the line is parallel to hp also the line is in this question the line is parallel to both vp and hp that's why in the front view and the top view we can get the original length in the views of the line the lines uh, actual length never change 60 mm it's the actual physical length of the line this never change but the views lengths are depends on how the line is located with respect to the horizontal plane and vertical plane if the line is maintained parallel to sorry if the line is maintained parallel to the vertical plane you will get the original length in the front view if the line is parallel to the horizontal plane you will get the original length in the top view if it is parallel to hp and vp then in both views you can get the original length of the line so uh, just remember this fact along with your answer uh, solving uh, procedure you have to keep this uh, fact in your mind okay now here the a dash b dash length is 60 mm we recognized now we need to draw this a dash b dash front view in the paper with respect to the x y line where you can draw this front view first of all you have to decide above x y or below x y see x y is here a dash b dash is here it is above x y or below x y above x y above yes very good above x y so the front view has to be drawn above x y how much above what is the 20 mm yes the same 20 mm is maintained here also so above x y 20 mm you can draw the front view of the line with a 60 mm length So in this range, you have to draw 60 mm length line. Measure 60 mm and draw the line. And name it as A dash B dash. Immediately you have to draw the projector towards the top view area. yes it just drawn the projector the a dash b dash is the our straight line front view of the straight line and the meantime you can mark the dimension also sixteen okay now the front view is over you have to draw the top view he the ab is nothing but the top view which is obtained in the horizontal plane uh, with our regular rule we have to rotate this horizontal plane in clockwise direction about 90 degree in order to make the entire plane as straight so if you made like that automatically the top view will comes below the xy line and here you can get it this is nothing but ab so from this chapter onwards always you are going to have your front view above xy and the top view below xy okay remember this thing and this is nothing but our top view we need to draw now first the top view is obtained below xy how much below xy what is this distance how much below xy 10 mm 10 mm because actually the line is located 10 mm in front of vp 10 mm in front of vp with the same 10 mm separation the line is 
so the top view of the line is located in front of x y after that we are rotating it with clockwise direction so the same 10 mm separation between the x y line and the top view of the line is maintained now also so this uh, the height is nothing but 10 mm so from the x y we have to measure 10 mm below proper leader line now you can draw the top view of the line a b see here already we are having the projector of a dash b dash the distance between these two end projector is nothing but already 60 mm so you need not to measure again 60 mm to draw the top view of the line you can connect the end projector that's enough this is nothing but a and b a and b so it is your top view having the same length as the front view uh, why it is having 60 mm length because the line is parallel to hp so the top view length is equal to the length of the line that is the 60 mm so this is nothing but the answer for this question so not uh, just consider it as an answer we just derived the things by the orthographic projection concept we assumed the line with respect to the horizontal plane and vertical plane as per the problem statement and then by following the orthographic projection concept we projected the line to obtain its front and top views in this way so this is nothing but the answer for this question okay by following this same concept you can draw the any straight line uh, which is placed uh, in front of uh, vp and uh, above hp in the rest of the chapters based on the position the procedure to draw the front and top view may extend but it's not complex the concept is the same once you uh, clearly understood the concept of projection here how to draw or how to project the straight line so then drawing the answer is very simple okay. any doubt with this question we just played with a straight line parallel to hp and parallel to vp we run the front and top views actually these kind of questions will not be asked in the examinations but if you don't know how to draw this con in this condition it is not possible for drawing the condition where you are going to face in the examination this is the, actually the basics The next question here is the straight line CD sixty five mm long having its end C. 10 mm above HP and 10 mm in front of B. The line is perpendicular to HP and parallel to B. Draw its projections. This is nothing but the question. The straight line CD 65 mm long. The length of the line is 65 mm. Uh, having its end C, maybe I am considering this end as a C and that end as a D. The end C 10 mm above HP. That end C is 10 mm above HP, right? And 15 mm in front of VP, 15 mm in front of VP and the line is perpendicular to HP and parallel to VP, see the same condition, the line is 
perpendicular to HP and parallel to V. See the line and the HP inclination is 90 degree and the same time the line is parallel to the VP. The second case, in second case, the first category. Okay. In that way, the line is placed uh, in space with respect to the horizontal plane and vertical plane. Now, you need to draw the front and the top views of the line. In the 3D environment, this is nothing but the actual line. One end is C, another end is D. One end is C, another end is D. Right? If you are going to draw the front view, the shadow of the line will fall on the vertical plane. Like that. And this end is nothing but C dash, and that end is nothing but D dash. And if you want to draw the top view of the line by looking it from the top, the shadow will be obtained in the horizontal plane just like a point okay just like a point so the same point can be mentioned with the c comma d there is no length there is no starting point end point for a single point so in the single point itself you have to mention c comma d in addition here you need to follow one more uh, uh, rule here what it is uh, whenever you are making two alpha words to mark a single point that is in this type of conditions if a straight line is uh, view is obtained as a point we need to mark two alphabets in the same way because at the same time you have to mention which is visible to your eyes and which is invisible to your eyes in the particular view see i am seeing this straight line from the top view and the d is visible to my eyes and the c is not visible to my eyes because the end C is just below the D. So, I need to give bracket for the alphabet C in the name. Inside the bracket you have to mention C and outside the bracket you have to mention D. If you mentioned like that, what is the story behind it? The end D is near to our eyes and the end C is far away from our eyes. So, in order to mention this logic, we need to follow the bracket rule. Okay. And this is nothing but we are going to draw here, starting from the XY line usually. First you have to draw the front view here. Front view is nothing but the C dash D dash. And uh, here uh, I just uh, forgot to mark the uh, dimensions. The lines end C is 10 mm above HP and 15 mm in front of VP. That is nothing but this end C is 10 mm above HP. 10 mm above HP and the same time it is 15 mm in front of VP. 15 mm in front of VP. So, what will be the location of C dash with respect to XY line? This is your XY line. What is the altitude of C from XY? What is that? 10 mm, sir. Yes, the same 10 mm, 10 mm. Actually, the end C is 10 mm above the HP. So, if you obtain the front view in the VP screen, with respect to XY, the distance of C dash is the same 10 mm. So, from the XY line, you have to measure 10 mm above. And we can mark the point C first, C dash first. And here, C dash D dash line is nothing but our front view. What is the length of this C dash D dash? C D length we know 65 mm. What is the length of C dash D dash? As per the standing condition of the line, what you will get in the front view length? It depends on the relation between the straight line and the VP screen. Straight line and the VP screen. The straight line CD is parallel to the vertical plane. So, 
So in front view, will you get the original length or reduced length? That's what I am asking now. Will you get original length or reduced original. length? Yes, original length only original. you will get. Original. Yes, the same 60 mm you will get. So from C dash, you have to mark the D dash with the 60 mm, uh, sorry, 65 mm length. This is sixty five. This is your D dash. And immediately after that, you have to draw the projector from both C dash and D dash. If you suppose to do that, you will get only one projector because C and D are perpendicular to the XY line. So if you project a line from D dash as well as from the C dash, you will get only one projector towards the top view area. Okay. Right now, it's our duty to draw the top view. Top view here is simply a point. Simply a point. That point need to be noted below XY as the top view. Where to mark that point? So this point, when you rotate the horizontal plane in clockwise direction, this point will fall below the XY line here. Below the XY line here. What I am asking is, what is the distance between that top view point and the XY line? How much it is below XY? That's what I am asking. If you know that distance, you can say this distance. You should know how much the end C is in front of VP. The same distance here will be followed below XY. Actually, the point C is 15 mm in front of VP. 15 mm in front of VP. The same 15 mm will be followed below XY. So, below XY, you have to measure 15 mm. and mark the point here this point can be named with C and D this point itself the top view of your straight line CD so C dash D dash is your front view CD is your top view so this is nothing but the projections of this straight line when it is standing with these conditions 